Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> I'm here today to talk about my personal journey. Like I told you yesterday, I decided to do this live so you can learn a bit more about my own story and um, hopefully you can relate to what I've been through, my own experience and know that everything you're going through in life, especially if you're an athlete as well, um, well, you're not alone in this, in this life, in, in your own story. So today, I want to share with you my own experience as an athlete and what I was able to go through and what was the result of all that and explain a bit more why I'm doing what I'm doing today and why I'm the person I am today. So it's going to be about that and at the end of the live, um, Please feel free to just uh, share your question. I'll be super happy to answer them. And also, um, if you have any subjects you want to talk about, um, yeah, I might be able to coach you on something. So I'll be super happy uh, to do so. Hello, Van Mary. Hope you're doing well. So yeah, as soon as you pop on this live, please uh, feel free to just say hi, hello, communicate with me. You're not just there to watch, but also to, you know, have this little chat with me. It would be super nice to uh, be able to connect this way. Hello. <laughs> so yeah, let's start. Um, yeah, so my personal journey, how it started. So personally, um, by the way, this is Bailey's. So the best thing about life is that you don't know what's going to happen. You cannot control anything. Hello. So my dog is going to be with me, obviously, because she's home alone right now. So she's going to be part of this life. <laughs> so yeah, um, how everything started for me. I was a little kid who really enjoyed doing sport. I wasn't really the most talented kid ever, but I had a lot of, um, how are you saying in English? I really wanted like really really a lot. I had a lot of perseverance and I had a lot of willingness to improve and to be the best. But by saying that I, I started you know doing like um, swimming, that was the first part that I tried, dancing, but then someone in my family was practicing taekwondo. This is how I learned about this sport, this martial art most, uh, most importantly. And then um, at the age of seven, my parents decided that it was time for me to start this uh, martial arts. So I started Taekwondo at the age of seven. And like I said, I wasn't the best when I was there, but I wanted, I wanted to be so good, so badly that I put a lot of effort, a lot of time into um, training, into uh, becoming better. And I participated in my first tournament at the age of maybe eight, something like that. And I remember I didn't win, I lost first round. But for me, it showed me how much I wanted to become even better. Because I lost at this moment, I was like, I have to be better. This is really what I need to do. So that's how it all started. And after that, yeah, I just put a lot of effort. I was really into becoming a better athlete and I wanted to learn even more. So my life was most likely separated into uh, two lives. This is the way I was seeing it. So I had everything related to Taekwondo and everything related to whatever else. So family, friends, school, whatever, that was on one side. And on the other side, I had Taekwondo. And I even, um, received my black belt at the age of 11 so I was really young but I remember at that time at this age I was already waking up in the morning before school uh, going running with my mom working out in the morning with her uh, studying the encyclopedia to know more about the sport and to be able obviously to uh, pass my test for a new degree etc etc so I was really involved <laughs> in my sport and I participated in my first world championship at the age of 14. And to be able to do that, I had to uh, get selected at, you know, before that, like at the age of 13. So I was really young still to do that. But the first time that I experienced the world championship, that was amazing for me. That was like so spectacular to just see everybody from around the world get her all together because of the same passion, because of the same goal to be obviously the best to win to get first place but also to just enjoy being surrounded by other people who has the same passion as you so that just totally 
got me and that inspired me to just continue and pursue that and be like you know what i want to continue competing because i want to experience that again and obviously i'm talking right now and you can see my background this is what inspired me to just continue moving on through this um passion so when i came back from the, my first world i didn't win i lost first round again but it just pushed me to keep getting better and what happened to me is that since I was so uh, involved and so willing to improve, I was working out a lot. I was working on my skills a lot. Um, so I started maybe by the age of 14 to 16, something like that, to get even a personal trainer, meaning um, someone approached me to like give me like a physical um, training program so I can improve improve even more um, so I was doing that I was uh, going to classes and I was also obviously school life was happening on the side too you know but I was really like super structured in my way of living so I had school I had onwards obviously I had friend but I was also uh, had to go right after school I was going straight to um, the gym where my trainer was and I was training with him for an hour and something and then after that I was going to uh, my my class at Taekwondo and that maybe three to four times a week so that was really my life and then you know so that how I was living and by the age of 14 to maybe 17 like I said this is when I kind of hit a wall first of all related to my motivation so I realized that I wasn't as motivated like I craved to just you know go out that was a teenager you know I just wanted to experience something else but also I wasn't seeing that much improvement at that time uh, even though obviously I was getting medals I was getting you know uh, um, suck some success around it but I, I felt that was really hard on myself and I didn't know that I would say that I always been really critical somewhat uh, self-critic like the word self-critic to be honest I was really hard on myself and also by this time I had a hard time managing my emotion actually the real thing now that I and I'm older and I can see it from a different perspective I know that I had a really hard time to manage my emotion because I didn't want to feel my emotion. I was really um, against them, I would say, because I really believed that my emotion was keeping me away from hitting my goals. I thought that if I was emotional, if I let my emotion be in, in the way, it would just stop me from succeeding. And unfortunately, that's not the truth, but that's how I discovered it wasn't the truth, you know what I mean? So, oh yeah, by the age of 14, 15, 17, that was a hard time. Like I said, I hit a wall because every single training that i was going to i was always crying what would happen is that i would receive a, a comment a critique on what i was doing you know someone wanted to help me but the way i was seeing it is someone was telling me that i'm not good enough that i'm not good and that what the thing that i'm doing are not good enough so it meant in my mind that i wasn't good enough so just receiving these comments made me feel really bad about myself and I will feel the anger coming up. I was really mad at myself for that. But obviously, I don't want I don't want to show the fact that I was mad, my anger. I didn't want to show that to the world because even when I was younger, I've been told that you should not show your emotion to the people around you, but you should not show your emotion especially when you're doing a specific sport. And in Taekwondo, when you compete, you, you fight against other people. So you don't want to show your opponent that you're feeling something. So that's how I perceived that. And since that day, I was really like, no, 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 no way. It had to be neutral. I have to be like a wall. Like, I don't know how to say that, but I, I didn't want to feel anything and show that I was feeling something. But that was hard for me because I was so emotional. <laughs> I was I had so much emotion inside of me. I, I'm, I'm someone that is... A really sensitive person meaning that I feel the emotion around I know what's going on and my emotion when I live them it's intense I've always been like as a kid someone who is really um, extrovert I, don't, I think it's how you say it like really out there like who loves to express what they feel and they want to talk and they want to be on the stage and I always been like that and at some point I got like caught <laughs> and someone like told me like you shouldn't be like that that's too much 
because of that I kind of shut down, I became, I became kind of really shy and really afraid of my emotion. So going back to 14 years old, 14, 15, 16, you're a teenager, I was trying to deal with my emotion but I didn't want to feel anything. So when I was training, this anger was coming up and I was so mad at myself for being mad that my throat was really painful and I was trying to keep this emotion inside instead of outside and what would happen is that I couldn't keep that inside anymore so I would cry. So for many years, almost every training, I was crying, crying every time. I was crying so much that my coach knew about it and would just let me be. Like they would not anymore ask me, am I okay? Are you good? Is, is something happened? Uh, are you in pain? Because I wasn't in pain. Like I remember saying to people like, no, you didn't hurt me. It's fine. It's just in my mind, you know, and I was so mad at myself for being like that. And my parents at this time wanted to help me, you know, so they bought me books. Uh, they even um, found a psychologist, uh, so a sports psychologist that I went to, uh, that I see, that I saw at this time. And sadly, I didn't connect that much with that person because I remember going there and already feeling, you know, a bit pity about myself, ashamed of being like I was. And I was like, oh, you know, I was crying. And even while I was saying that, I was crying also. And I remember him telling me that, oh, you know, your emotion, you can put them in the, in the black box and close it. And, you know, when you're competing or you're training, you don't think about them. They're just in the, in the black box. And I remember looking at him like, are you kidding me? Are you telling me that my emotion, I just have to put it aside and that's it? Like, I should imagine a black box and put in that and so he got me upset <laughs> so it didn't work and I told my dad like sadly like no like that's not working and so I felt even worse about myself at that point and yeah so that last um so yeah even though I had this emotional uh, problem I would say it like that like as some a uh, hard time to manage these emotions I was still competing I was still going through you know um like getting new uh, de degrees and competing at international level, etc. But you know, there was something missing. I knew it because as soon as I was getting to the world championship, like a bigger tournament, like international tournament, I couldn't go through, like I couldn't get to the middle. Compared to like when I was here in Canada, uh, I was getting first most of the time. I was one of the best yes like i would say like that in my division like at that time i was able to get first place but then as soon as we would get to the world cups or the world championship i wasn't able to get on the podium like i will like a, i don't know if you say that but i will choke like it would not work because of that now with time i can see that i was missing some mental and some emotional aptitude at that time and so until um i turned 18 I uh, went to see another sports psychologist, someone that was referred to me, uh, another athlete who told me that this guy was really good and this guy uh, won the world championship in 2011 and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, you know what, why not? <laughs> so maybe that will help me. And I went to see him, not with the, the goal of uh, helping me with my emotion, but the main goal for me was to become more confident. I thought I was uh, missing confidence. I was not confident enough. And when I went to see him, I told, I told him that, that I wanted to become more confident. And when I was talking, just saying that made me really emotional. And again, the same cycle happened. Like I got mad at myself for being emotional and blah, blah, blah. And then I started crying and I cried. And by the end of the session, I remember him telling me a story and telling me that I was allowed to cry. And I was like, what? <laughs> And that seems like so little when you say that, when I say that out loud, but for me, that made such a difference because I've never seen it like that. Like for me, I wasn't allowed to have emotion. I wasn't allowed to cry. In my mind, I was repeating that to myself, like, no, you cannot cry, don't cry. You should not cry. Should. And for me at that time, I thought I had a problem with my, my crying, but actually it was with dealing with anger. Like, that's another story, but everything related to being angry, um, yeah, ang angry management. I don't know how you would say that in English, but that's the way it was. So when he told me that I'm allowed to cry, I'm like, what? And it explained to me, like, you know, it's an emotion and blah, blah, blah. And then it gave me a 
homework, an exercise to do. And that is so interesting because recently I understood even more what was this exercise, how, how this exercise worked for me, how come it worked. So it told me that since I'm always trying to stop myself from being emotional, now it wanted me to try to just letting myself be emotional. So challenging myself. So as soon as I will feel like I want to cry, just challenging myself to cry. Like, go ahead, cry, girl. Like, let it out. Go, you can do it. And telling myself that in my head. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I tried that. It actually worked. What happened actually, if I put it in other words, what I understood later on is that what it told me to do is because I was such, uh, I was trying so hard to not cry. So it wanted me to experience the other extreme and try to just let myself cry even more than usual. So by doing that, I was able after that to find the middle, like the in-between, what's best for me, like how to manage my emotion for myself. But I would only understand that if I'm able to live this other extreme, if I'm able to experience this other extreme of letting myself cry, like there's no tomorrow, you know? So that's what I did. Each time that I was training after that, I challenged myself to cry even more or to let it out out and what happened magically is that i didn't even want to cry i was okay with it because i accepted the fact that i'm allowed to have emotions <laughs> and yeah that sounds crazy or maybe even stupid for, for a certain person but for me that was like life-changing moment totally so after that that also what what happened is that it took such so much pressure on my shoulder so much pressure that i put on myself by myself you know but at that moment i thought that i was just you know too emotional and i wasn't ready for that i wasn't good enough because of that but then i realized that oh my god like i i can deal with that i can you know do something about that and how that uh, also the evolution of that is i had a hard time at some point also to deal with stress meaning that when i was competing i I would think about you know the the next opponent i would think about the whole process of like winning what would i have to do who i would have to compete against and i would get really stressed and the way my body would react to stress as most of the people know is i would get really uh tense you know i would get really contracted and uh, my leg will be uh will become really heavy and i will feel like weird like really slow uh have a hard time to be really efficient with my kicks and blah 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 so by managing my emotion by saying that i'm allowed to have emotions same thing can apply to stress meaning that you're allowed to be stressed and actually stress can be transformed in something else can be transformed can be used as energy instead of uh being seen as a bad thing so now my perception on emotions change i was able to see emotion as a good thing as a tool as something that would uh, push me forward instead of letting me down you know and that's what happened later on with other tournament is that when i was feeling stressed i would be like yes i'm i'm ready to go it means that my body is really is ready to react is ready for action and that was just amazing that I was able to switch that up. I call the time when I'm having strong emotion and love the time I'm embarrassed, but this is so encouraging that crying is not shameful. Oh, totally. It, it just changed my mind as soon as I understood that. And I'm still crying a lot, <laughs> just telling you. I'm still someone who is emotional, but now I see it as a something powerful just because if I'm able to let it out, it means that my body can, doesn't have to be so tense and I don't have to put so much pressure on my shoulder and I can go on with life but yeah totally it's it's something that really um, delivered me like uh, I feel freer obviously because of that but yeah when yeah even now in, in not now but at that time in tournaments stress was something good for me now um, being afraid was just a way to tell me that this tournament is something important meaning that it's a good thing that I'm afraid it means that something good is gonna happen for me if I'm crying it just means that my body wants to release something so just let it be so as soon as I gave myself permission to live my emotion everything becomes just way 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 better 
So that was the first thing. So that was the first life-changing moment in my career. Then after that second thing that happened is when I was, I think, 20 years old. Yeah, so in 2015, I went to the World Championship in Italy. And I remember that morning, uh, it was my day when I was supposed to compete uh, in sparring. Yeah, so fighting, those who don't know, whatever. <laughs> so I remember uh, eating my breakfast, getting ready to get in the bus, and then going to uh, the stadium to compete. And on in the bus, on my way to the tournament, um, I was in my zone, I was listening to music, you know, my usual routine. And for some reason, something popped up in my head. And I remember telling myself, I'm gonna try to translate it as better as I can in English because obviously I speak in, to myself in French most of the time but it meant like I don't care about the result I remember telling myself that in my head I don't care about the result and it sounded so weird and like why would I tell myself that because obviously I do care about the result you know like I want to win but at that moment I, I kind of understood what I meant because most of the time I will put so much um, energy into like getting a certain result, like winning the gold medal, that I will be obsessed with it. And I will not focus on the, pro the process, which is the most important part. So when you compete, yes, you want to win, but you have to focus on one step at a time, meaning being able to do this technique uh, good and being able to, you know, one fight at a time to be able to get to the final and then get the result that you want. But if you're only seeing the result, you don't take any consideration of the process and you might not get to the result just because of that. And that's the way I was going when I was, especially at international tournaments. That was the thing that was blocking me a lot. So that time in the bus, out of, out of nowhere, I told myself, I don't care about the result. And the way I understood it is I have to focus on, I want to focus on one step at a time. I don't care what's happening. I don't care who's the next person. I just care about one step at a time, like winning one little thing at a time. I don't care about what's going to be the, the, um, the result of the fight itself, meaning like the, I don't know how you say that, like how many points ahead I am, just the fact to be winning that is fine. Like, I don't care like all oh, intense should be, how it should look, I'm not giving a show, I'm just there to do one little thing at a time. So thinking like that, I arrived to the tournament, got myself ready uh, for my first fight, and I was in my zone, I was just doing what I needed to do, nothing extra, nothing too much, no overstress. And at that point I was, you know, managing even more my, my emotion, I was better at it, so that helped too. So when I got in my first fight, I didn't know who the girl was, I didn't check her before that either, because I had the experience that as soon as I look upon like who I'm going to be fighting against, I'm already thinking ahead of what maybe she's gonna do, how she's gonna react, and when I'm fighting against her, she doesn't do that. So I, it doesn't help me to just try to figure out how this girl or how this open opponent's gonna fight because it doesn't help me in the end when I'm fighting at the moment. So when I got in my first fight, I was just living in the present moment, just all right, my goal is just to get the first point, get the next point, and like finish that round, finish the next round, and just win that. And what happened, because my mindset was toward the process, is that I won the first fight, second, third, and I lost in semifinal, meaning that I got third place. I lost again uh, in the third round because I knew the girl, and I expected that she would fight a certain way, and she didn't, so I got, um, yeah, I, I got, stuck into that and I didn't win because of that because my mind switched up and I wasn't um, thinking about the process anymore but just about the result so I was able to realize that and be like wow what's such a that was such a big change in my mindset again to see things like that and be like I don't care about the result like what I want to do is the best every at every step of you know the process and that's what happened most likely so with that mindset, I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I have to incorporate that even more. So I took that, the emotion that helped me. And then 2017 arrived and I lost second round. 
and again I got caught in the I have to win, I have to be this way. So I didn't fully take in all the lessons and everything that I've learned before and that's when I was like, all right, the way that I'm training right now is not serving me. Because I would train again, like I was telling you before, I want to be the best, but I have a sorry, I have a hard time with criticism and everything. So my way of coping with that was to work even more work out like crazy meaning like again i was working out um i had a physical training program i had technical you know taekwondo related i had um private classes with other instructor or other teacher because you know i wanted to be the best so i, I want to give myself every chance possible but what would that do is that i would not give any chance to myself to listen to what i really need because at some point, as an athlete, you have to be able to listen to your own intuition. You cannot rely on everybody else around you, even though they're really good at what they do, even though they have super good advice to give you. But at some point, you are the expert at yourself. You are your own expert. You know what's best for you. Maybe you don't think you know, but you do know deep down if you take the time to listen. And that's what 2017, taught me is that all right my way to prepare myself is not the right way for me even though I've been doing that for so many years but now it's not serving me anymore so I have to do something differently and that during the two years in between the 2017 world championship and the 2019 a lot of stuff happened in my personal life also and I realized that I want to affirm myself even more I have to tell what I want to say tell in, and be able to say what I want to say with the right words. So expressing myself was something hard before, even though like I told you when I was younger, it's something that was, was so easy for me, but then someone shot me up <laughs> and then now I had to learn again to express myself right. And then learning to allow myself to do the things the way I want to do them was really hard too. But that's what I gave myself the permission to do. So when, hello Emmanuel. <laughs> so as soon as I, I would say in 2018, going 2019, that's when I gave myself permission to uh, stop Taekwondo, whatever the result I would get at the World Championship in 2019. So for me, what that meant is before that, I would attach my identity to Taekwondo, meaning if I win means I'm good, if I, I lose it means I'm not good. But not only related to whatever I do, but whatever I am. So my being was really attached to my my doing, I would say like that, to my uh, accomplishment, to whatever I will uh, be able to get, my success, everything. But what that do is that that will affect a lot of my self-esteem because whenever I would not get the result that I want, it would mean something even stronger than what it really means because obviously when you lose at a tournament it doesn't mean you're a bad person you're not good enough it just means that hey there's something you can work more on physically wise mentally wise emotionally wise and that's okay it doesn't take away anything from who you are but i didn't know that at that point obviously now it's easier for me to say that but at that moment in 2018, I gave myself the permission to stop Taekwondo if I wanted to after the World Championship. So that released a lot of stress and pressure for me to be the best. And I remember even in 2017, yeah, 2017 before Ireland, the World Championship, I wrote in one of my journal that I will only be happy and complete at, when I will be world champion. An individual because I was already was champion in um, a group in my god I don't even know how to say in English anymore uh, team pattern in team sorry so I was already world champion in team pattern twice and but I really wanted to be world champion in individual in sparring and in um, in pattern but for me it that's the only way I would be happy if I'm able to achieve that. So that's how much my identity was attached to my results. Um, that's when, that's why also I told myself, even if I don't win, I'm allowed to just 
finish my career like that, I'll just take a break, at least take a break. And that took a lot of pressure off and also I found myself in a different way in other sphere of my life and that led me to um, decide to prepare myself differently for, for my last world championship. So instead of putting lots of my efforts only on the physical side, thinking that's the only thing I can do to become better, I decided to put a lot of time and effort into my emotional aptitudes and my mental aptitudes. Something that I put aside for a long time, but now I couldn't do it anymore. If I wanted a result, if I wanted to get to the next level, I needed to introduce that into my routine, into my training. And that's what I did. That was really scary, to be honest, because that, would be, that was the first time ever that I would say, you know what, this is how I want to train. This is how I want to do it. I'm going to reduce the amount of hours that I put into the physical training and I want to put that more in my mental and emotional training. And think about that. I, I told that to my coach. I told that to my parents and they were like, are you okay? Like, are you fine? <laughs> because for them, it's like they've seen me, they saw me like work out like crazy before, like train for hours and all of a sudden I was cutting that in half and put more time more in the mental and the emotional side. And when you do mental training and emotional training, uh, you know, it's not physical. So you're just like doing some visualization, uh, learning how to breathe properly, uh, doing some more journaling, working, you do some inner work. So it's really different. So it doesn't seem like you're working from the exterior. So someone who doesn't know would never like say that, oh my God, she's working hard, but actually you're doing something so important. So important when you do that, it's just crazy. So. I'm sorry, I say so a lot, so that's it. <laughs> when I started this way of training, I was afraid. I was afraid that maybe it would not work. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe if I listen to my intuition, it would be wrong. It would not lead me to the result that I want. But I did it either way. I just did it either way. I was, yeah, that was one of my in my head my last option i needed to try it to make sure that that was the way to go so i did it so i cut my out training hours in half and i started to do a specific routine at night every night i would do visualization of trainings of specific technique and by the end closer to the world championship I will do visualization of the whole tournament, how I will see it. So me uh, getting warmed up for patterns, for example, me competing in patterns, me you know, going round after round, me feeling all the sensations related to me performing patterns and then seeing myself on the podium and how I would feel. So it was really about, yes, seeing myself do the things that I wanna do and how I wanna do it, but also how I wanna feel when I do them. So yes, feeling the stress, because stress will be there, but using the stress and feeling enthusiastic, feeling uh, energetic, feeling good about myself, feeling confident, feeling proud. So all those feelings, I was able to feel it in my body at the same time that I was visualizing. Visualizing? Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I cannot say that word, that's too hard. But yeah, when I was doing that, and also the other thing that I was doing is breathing. Breathing meaning that as soon as I will feel a lot of energy, I will be able to breathe and take all the tension out of my body. So the way I, I say it is breathing through the tension. So as soon as I feel that I'm super tense somewhere in my body, and I say that there because usually for me, it's really the shoulders, the neck, that area, I will just breathe through it and a good trick that I've learned is to contract even more and then relax so you see the difference when you go to one extreme and then to another so you're really able to relax even more so that's something that I've learned and also uh, related to the physical the training I cut like I said half of my hours of training and I was only practicing what I felt I needed to practice. I, I didn't overtrain. I didn't overdo the thing because maybe I was afraid there would not be enough because before that was my, my problem too, I would say. I would always think that I need to do more. It has to be more. 
I have to train even more to make sure that I'm ready. But when you think that, you have you know this slack mentality that it's never enough. You're always missing something. So I decided to just trust myself and be like, I need that today. Tomorrow I will need something else. Maybe tomorrow I will train for 30 minutes. Maybe tomorrow I'll just train for five minutes. Tomorrow I will train for an hour. Who cares? Whatever I feel I need to do, I will just do it. So that's really what happened. And again, I was still afraid that I would not work, but I still did it. And I think that's the thing about you know courage and going through your fear is even though the fear are there, like the, the thoughts that repeating that you maybe it's not gonna be good, you just go with it and you go, you continue either way. And fast forward to the world championship, that was the best time of my life. <laughs> Mainly because when I got there, I felt that I knew it would be great. Just because I did all that work, I knew it would be different in a good way. I knew I was ready. I knew I would just get everything I can. I will do my best and that would be good. And that will be okay. That will be enough, actually. And the universe did test me the first day to make sure that I was really ready with my mindset because I remember first day of competing, I was um, about to compete in patterns individual pattern and in the morning uh, we took the bus to go all the way to the stadium and actually it was like a 20 minute ride when I got to the stadium I realized I didn't bring my uh, my good doba my uniform the one that I used to compete with the Canada in the back well I didn't bring that one I bring I brought another one with without the Canada so it was like oh my god I have to go back to the hotel and freaking get back here and compete and at that moment I wasn't stressed I was just like that is funny. Look at that, how the universe is trying to like play with me. And I was like, that's fine. I'm just going to go back to the hotel, bring it. Know that I might not have as much time that I thought to warm up, but that's that's it. So no stress added. I, I was fine. I was ready for that. And that's what happened. I went all the way back to, the, my, um, to, to my hotel, came back to the tournament and put that on. Then my warm up. Let with less time, but I felt ready. I was like, you know what? You, I know I'm ready. I've, I did the work before. It's gonna be okay. I feel great. I, I felt all the good energy around me. I was in my zone. I was good. And even a big difference that I realized also is before I used to be really in my bubble, not talking to anyone I was when I was getting ready for a tournament because I, I didn't want to be distracted. But that's because I was afraid that maybe I would get distracted and I, I didn't trust myself into being about to go back in my zone. But now, at that tournament, that was different. I was able to talk with other people and feeling great because people would bring me a good energy. So I was making sure I was talking with the good people, obviously, the people with good vibes. But yeah, I was able to just have a conversation with my best friend who was there, my coach. He was hyping me, hyping me up. It was a good time and I was just feeling great. And when I competed, it went amazing. I was able to do first first round I went through the first the second third fourth round and then I went to final and I lost in final I got second place but for me that was first place because first of all it was my first time in this uh, category and it was one of the most uh, difficult category as well and I was able to just go all the way up in this vibe in this mindset and and yeah just this way and I got second place and for me it just meant that I can trust myself. I can trust myself. I can trust the way that I need to train. I can trust the way that I need to feel. I can trust the way that I can trust myself. Like if I follow the way that I am, if I fully intend to my way of training and being, that's what's gonna happen. I'm not gonna cry right now, but I'm really emotional right now by telling you all this. So yeah. And again, I competed in sparring uh, the next day and I got third place and everything related to that just really Salut Marily! <laughs> yeah, so everything um, related to that, I just felt that this experience proved me in a certain way that I was able to trust myself in any situation. So if I just give myself the chance to do it and follow my intuition and follow what I know that I need to do, that's what's gonna happen. 
So then after that, like I told you, I decided to take a break of Taekwondo and I was like, all right, now I'm done with Taekwondo. I want to do something else, try something else because for 17 years of my life, I've been dedicated to this sport. Now I want to try something new. And that's when I decided to put aside Taekwondo and go all the way to my professional life. Professional life, uh, at this, I, I wanted first, well, um, break. <laughs> While I was still competing and still training, I got a bachelor degree in kinesiology because, again, I was so involved with sport that I wanted to um, help athletes um, perform in their sport by giving them great uh, physical program, physical training program, training program, whatever all you want to say it. So that's why I so I got my degree in that, but then I realized that I was way more um, uh, interested in the mental side of the sport of the preparation since my whole story. So instead of pursuing in kinesiology, even though I had my own kinesiology um, business for some of a while, like I coached, I I did some training for other athletes, as in. Um, Oh, you see that ice skating uh, other people in taekwondo obviously even people in judo in the so i did some of kinesiology work at some point but then i wanted to get more involved in the mental side the all the psychology side and i decided to uh, start my certification as an nlp coach so neuro-linguistic uh, programming so this is a uh, a type of psychology if you want so these multiple techniques that helps you to develop your potential and to achieve your goal because it gives you um, specific exercise to just address the problem that you're going through and give you solutions to go to move forward so instead of looking at your past looking at how come of like how come have you been all the way to this point we just look at your present situation and we con um, build solution towards uh, whatever goal you have so this is NLP. But in between, something that I forgot to tell in the other live, uh, in between um, the World Championship 2019 and when I decided to start my certification in uh, NLP, I worked also at the NPQ, which is the National, National School of Police so it's the police institute i don't know how you can translate that in english but this is the school here in quebec where all the future police officer has to go to to get uh their their training to become police officers so i got a job there as a physical instructor meaning that i was teaching self-defense and i was teaching also everything related to um um i don't know how to say like the baton and the handcuff like how to use them so all these things how to use them and even how to react in certain uh, situations so everything related to the physical side the self-defense side and also some of the mental side that's what i realized afterwards so all the things that i've learned from my years in taekwondo in sport did help me to be able to teach at this school afterward for a year and a half and then after that i, I continued my certification in lp and here i am as a certified NLP coach and now what I want to do with all that knowledge of experience is to help other athletes other professional also because I do have professional as client to really um, help them live their full potential and be able to be fully themselves fully entertain and know themselves better so they know how to perform they know how to access their full potential by themselves and to do that in order to do that i help them develop their emotional aptitude and their mental aptitude this is usually the two um, aspects that are usually put aside too much because we put a lot of energy like i do in my own story you put a lot of energy into the physical side which you know you need i'm not saying that you should not train or anything obviously but you have to be able to balance everything out and when you're able to balance everything and know more about the mental and the <clears throat> and the emotional side that would just make you a more complete athlete it will help you perform at your best level and being able to just fully live your potential 
and that would also translate in your everyday life and that's something that now after a year and a half of my last tournament that I'm learning everything I've been through in my life in Taekwondo in sport is helping me right now in all of the respect of my life which is so amazing it is also that I'm what I'm doing with clients showing them how everything they're learning right now in their sport how uh, it help, it can help them in other sphere of their life in other areas of their life because everything is connected it's not everything is separated and what happened there this is not related to this and blah 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 everything is fully connected all together so you have to know you have to be able to see all the lesson and everything that you're learning in one aspect in one sphere of your life how you can bring it in other sphere and that's how you you know you grow in your life that's how you really grow and you improve and you evolve and you become and even I would say better person a more complete person I would say and that's why I feel so grateful that my experience as an athlete oh salut Camila it's been so long I hope you're doing well girl <laughs> so yeah <clears throat> so everything uh, yeah what I'm saying is I'm so grateful that I I was an athlete and everything I've been through as an athlete is now helping me in other sphere of my life and I wish that to everybody that's why I'm so involved with athletes with people who are just you know not just athletes with every level a level of people of athlete I would say even if you're just starting in a new sport even if you're at an international level even if you're someone who just run on Sundays <laughs> you know everybody has the potential to be an athlete deep down a natural athlete and I call them the inner champion this is really the human potential the, the inner champion everybody has one and to be able to fully live your inner champion to let it be to let it live you have to be able to manage every aspect of your life altogether meaning the physical the emotional the mental side and when you put this all together you're able to get result expon exponentially exponential exponentially i think it's that <laughs> that's i think that's how you say it but yeah and that's what I realized and even right now after all this time I I come I'm now coming back also to the police school the police institute to teach again because I realized that teaching is one of my passion and at the beginning it was just to help me just since I'm back in Canada and Quebec like why not working again there but the last few days I realized that you know what I really miss teaching I really need this aspect of my life because I've been teaching since I'm 14. I didn't say that, but I started teaching when I was 14 in a small school. I was an instructor, assistant instructor, and then became an instructor, and here we go. But yeah, I really miss teaching, and I think that's something I want to bring again here. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to talk a bit more about it because there's a lot of stuff that I want to show you guys and share with you and just teach something I miss a lot and now I can combine it with coaching which is another aspect coaching is really helping guiding other people to get to their goal the way they need it uh, I'm taking a mental break right now from studying to watch this and this is exactly what I needed you're so motivational oh thank you so much ah, that, that means a lot to be honest yeah yeah the story I, I hope that helps you because I to be honest I really love watching other people, listening to their stories, because we can always relate to other people, you know? Everything we're going through, of what we've been through, it's not so special. With, It's not negative to say it that way, meaning that all the emotions we're going through, they are human emotion, meaning everybody has them. We don't like put the same meaning on it, but everybody have, has, have, whatever, emotions, and it's all the same. So when we know how to navigate them and all the circumstances, all the situations we go through, these are all the same at the end of the day because we are all humans. And yeah, it's really, it, gives, it takes us a lot of pressure when you see it this way. And that's why I really wanted to share my own story to, you know, tell you, uh, to tell you that and to remind you that, that everything you're going through is gonna be fine. And you 
sometimes you just need a miracle and what actually is a miracle is just a change in perspective when you start saying things differently that's when change happen and that's when you can evolve and you can grow and you can access to the next level and that's how i understood it as soon as i hit my first wall it's a good thing to hit a wall you know it's really a good thing even though we don't see it is it just means that maybe there's something missing something we didn't look into that much that we should and that will help us grow at this point and I hit a couple walls and I did hit a wall even a couple months ago again to see like where am I going with all this but I think yeah it just gave us time to just relax and that's part of human life you know like everything is a cycle meaning that we always gonna have ups and downs we cannot be neutral always happy always this we can decide to see things as positive and negative, like I said, as helping or limiting. That's how I like to see it as well. I prefer actually, but there's always going to be ups and downs and how the downs are, how bad the downs are. It just depends on how you see them. If you are able to see the positive in this situation, it's always going to be more comfortable, which is good. And after you can go back to an up and down. What you don't want to do is going too much into extreme meaning you're so happy and then the next day you're so depressed and everything is the worst so just be able to manage this is really the balance of life also the cycle of life if you just look at the season outside it's the same thing the natural law are a reference for us in our human life also everything is a cycle so it's going to be hops and down it's going to go it's going to go well because after that it's going to maybe go down but then you know you have to have faith and know that's always going to be better afterward there's always going to be a better time and it's fine it's okay we don't have to stress it out we don't have to be so feeling so bad about it that was saying but yeah Whew, that was a lot of words and I feel this live in English is way better than my French one. Damn, maybe I'm gonna just keep talking in English now. No more French. I'm joking, but <laughs> for some reason, I don't know, it felt way more natural to talk to you in English than it felt to explain my own story in French. So I might refer my French people to go watch this one. Amazing. And yeah, thank you. Okay, I had a call, seems that sorry. So thank you so much for everybody who was there, who took the time to listen to this story. Thank you, when Mary was there, who talked with me also, Camila, Emmanuel, other people who were there today, it really means a lot. And if you have any question, if you wanna share anything with me, uh, it would be a pleasure. You can even do it right now in the comments, or also you can send me a DM. Like I love talking with people, just interact, share, uh, connect with people, this is, why i'm on social media to connect with people that's the main reason and i think that should be the main reason for everybody but voila <laughs> and yeah you will hear a bit more about also whatever i'm doing right now at the moment like i told you a bit earlier i put aside taekwondo for a certain time but to be really honest to be honest I really miss martial art, I really miss Taekwondo and I truly believe that I'm gonna slowly go back to it. I don't think, I don't know if I'm gonna be competing, that I don't know, I can tell now, but what I want to do is uh, experience and also I would say try my own advices, meaning the way that I see sport now is so different and I would love to experience that for myself, meaning training in a way that is fully um good for myself authentic to myself the way that my body wants to move and if at some point i decide to just compete again that will be it why not that will be amazing or i would just be still part of taekwondo because obviously it's part of my life i don't want to put that away even though i did for a certain time because i needed it and now that i'm back you know to finding balance into my life and finding where taekwondo has a place uh it still has a place in my heart and i want to try it again probably soon you're gonna hear about it <laughs> and yeah maybe i'm gonna show you guys the whole process of this coming back not necessarily like i said uh, coming back at competition or anything like that but just coming back as a martial artist i'll keep you updated with that and also like i said earlier i 
I want to go back to my passion of teaching even though I'm doing coaching right now I want to keep teaching in certain ways so uh, stay tuned for different I would say I'll offer a different service and then offer uh, that will help you in different area meaning that I want to teach my experience I want to teach the thing that I know and I that I think can serve other people and I think that could be super helpful for future athlete actual athlete international athlete whoever needs it wants it it's gonna be for you and yeah so just stay tuned for that I have a lot of idea that popped my head recently so I think I'm gonna share with you guys and I will be so 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 happy to help you in this process to just yeah share whatever that I know and be happy that it can serve you in any ways so yeah so again yes so 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 ah that was great what a great conversation again thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you really soon uh, don't be shy talk to me communicate with me send me a message be super happy to interact with you have a good day people